transportation and travel mobility the future uh, once more transportation and travel mo mobility the uh, mobility the future with the uh, famous speaker today dr hazaria mohammad no senior lecturer in the KL malaysia institute aviation technology and juga dia facial person next generation ship malaysia and uh, Sahabat saya, Haji Basri Fahriza, Sajana Ekonomi MBA, Head of Study Program Bachelor of Management and Transportation and Logistic at Trisakti Institute of Transportation and Logistic Jakarta. Tanpa membuang masa lagi, saya mengucapkan terima kasih kepada kedua-dua speaker dan thank you very much for the participant you can to join right now. And we hope you can to get the something new experience and new knowledge from the good uh, speaker. Therefore, in Dangumilang, will uh, before you sharing the ILC video, let we pray first with uh, with themselves. Jadi mari kita berdoa menurut keyakinan masing-masing. Berdoa dipersilakan. Alright, okay. Ah, uh, okay. So Very saya clear. mulakan ya, Prof. <laughs> okay. Yes, Alright, yeah. okay. Ah, uh, okay. Terima kasih. Ah, uh, thank you so much, ah, uh, Prof. Ah, uh, Assistant Prof. Ah, uh, Sharul Riza for inviting mm. me for this ah uh, ah uh, special uh, series session. Ah, uh, I think two hundred forty, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yep. Ah. Uh, Yes, uh, international uh, lecture share series uh, bersempena dengan Indonesia Transportation Day with the titles of the uh, transportation and travel mobility of the future. Uh, since I came from the aviation and aerospace uh, campus, I would like to focus the topic more or less uh, detailing on the uh, aviation and uh, aerospace related. Transportation and travel mobility of future aviation at a big when. So uh, before I start, uh, Prof Reza already explained about uh, myself just now. I'm from UNIKL, University Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysian Institute of Aviation Technology, based in. Uh, Selangor, uh, part of Malaysia, one state of Malaysia. Uh, we have two campuses, one in uh, close to the Kuala Lumpur International Airport and another one more is close to the Subang International Airport. And uh, I'm also the vice chairman for the uh, Chartered Institute Logistic Transport Malaysia under the next generation. Um, so when we talk about the uh, topic, there's a, it is a very interesting uh, topic uh, today. Uh, related to the future mobility of the air travels. But before that, let's see uh, in in roughly, actually, what is the future of the air travels? So as an introduction, so we know that nowadays uh, people is talking about the, the sustainable uh, sustainable energy, uh, anything that related to the uh, environmental and climate change. So we have the future of air travel that uh, looking into the new renewable energy such as the hydrogen powered planes and also we have um, aircraft that currently being developed and uh, in terms of the uh, beyond the traditional wing design that we currently have as well as we have the futuristic of the cabin design so that the travelers, uh, the passenger of that particular airlines can have a better view and can have a better, uh, what we call it, the arrangement in the uh, cabin. As well as we're talking about the uh, future air taxi or we call it as a uh, flying taxi. And uh, the fifth one, we have the returns of the supersonic uh, flights. Uh, as before, we have the Concorde. But... The passenger choose to be in which airline they wanted to be. For example, like uh, they have the virtual reality or augmented reality in the cockpit. Okay. Thank you. 
examples like in Malaysia, of the uh, Uber or we have the Soka that uh, provide the uh, mode of transportation uh, in terms of uh, going from destination A to destination B, where we call it as the servitizations. Yeah. But uh, again, uh, when we talk about the topic today that we have uh, come into this, uh, actually, uh, two questions. Eh? Yeah. Hold on. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me know when when uh, I'm no longer being able to be here, yeah, Prof? Because yeah, I can yeah, hear no that. Problem. Can no problem. No problem. Yeah, because no problem. I can see the internet is not stable uh, for All me right. in here. <laughs> Okay, so we need to look at into these uh, two different uh, questions in here. Yeah? For example, that uh, we know that actually what is the future mode of the transportation that will be exist in the 2030. Also, we need to look at in terms of the will passenger of the aircraft be piloted or autonomous as now we have the uh, Tesla right by the uh, Elon Musk that uh, autonomous or it can be in somewhere in between in terms of the uh, mode of rotation so the answer will be that we can see that all transport trends in the aviation and the aircraft sector uh, is basically covering the solutions for the urban for passengers and also the flight. So we can see that whether it can be the flying taxis, it can be the drone uh, flight, electric aeroplane, or even the new uh, developments of the uh, aviation and aerospace industries, such as the, I mentioning about the fuels, such as hydrogens or the aircraft designs or even the material. So this will be the future, uh, what we call it, the air transportations uh, for the mobility uh, in terms of the uh, passenger and also fracture. But again, when we talk about all the future mobility, we also need to ensure that whatever that it is, it need to be uh, go in, 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 in parallel with the SDG, yeah? Sustainable Development Goals. So in here, when we talk about this uh, aviation uh, related future mobility, we are taking into a consideration of the SDG 13 and also SDG 7, yeah? where the SDG 13 is talking about the uh, urgent actions uh, in order to combat the climate change and its impact. Uh, and SDG 7 is talking about the affordable and clean energy to ensure that reliable and sustainable uh, for the more modern energy for all uh, mode of the transport. So in here, when we are talking about the uh, development of the aircraft uh, for sustainability in future mobility, we can see that these are the among uh, the criteria that we need to take into a consideration. Where the first one is we are talking about the power plant, about the engine itself uh, that need to have the 5 to 10% uh, fuel burn benefit. So we we can see that the other side, the electrific uh, the electrifications of the aircraft propulsions that can reduce the minor uh, can reduce the five percent of the fuel burn and also maintenance benefit. These are the uh, crucial identifications of the developments of the future mobility in terms of the uh, air transport. And other than that, we are talking into uh, considerations materials that being used, for example, the composite that can have uh, to be said that is six times uh, uh, manufacturing uh, rate uh, increase in terms of the wings and also in terms of the structure. If before the aircraft made by 100% of the metals, but nowadays the increasing demands of the uh, composite materials in order to reduce the weight and enhance to reduce the fuel uh, usage. And uh, other than that, we are talking about the integrated trajectory optimization, which is also reduce the uh, one to two percent of the uh, fuel consumptions uh, and minimizations of the contrail uh, formation. So these are the most uh, important parts when we talk about the uh, future of the air mobility. Other than uh, sustainable aviation fuels that using a different type of biomass that can reduce the life cycles of carbon emissions as well as 
the transonic thrust brace wing that reduced the 5 to 10 percent fuel burn benefit. So when we look at the developments of the aircraft for sustainability for future, we understand that we are trying to make sure that the uh, uh, proper, proper state of the uh, fuel burn benefits and efficiency is there. Okay. But uh, again, uh, when we talk about the enabling the next generations of the air mobility in future, we are talking about the high speed as well as also sustainable flight. So in here, for example, are giving an, uh, examples of the Rolls Royce uh, actions. The first one is that uh, transformations of the engine performance so that they have the better efficiency of the aircraft engines. And the second one, they are trying to enable the high speed supersonic and hypersonic flight capability that can reduce the time uh, frame from destination, uh, one destination to another destinations. And again, to support the drive towards the more sustainable aviation, such as using the uh, drones and also the uh, flying taxi, for example. And uh, these are an examples of the, when we talk about the uh, hypersonic flight uh, technology, actually, when we talk about this one, it's actually, it's already uh, passed the huge significant milestone as we can see that in this diagram you can see that if we have this type of aircraft from london to sydney actually is uh about uh, 11 more or less uh, close to twelve thousand miles and using a normal airbus 380 it will take about 22 hours but if the hypersonic flight can be well established in terms of the structure, in terms of the technology, and in terms of the uh, traffic, uh, air traffic management. It only can take about 4.6 hours. So imagine the time consumption has been reduced, as well as uh, the other uh, technology that can be uh, advancements in terms of this flight. Um, and then uh, now when we talk about the, the future of air mobility, we are talking about the electric aircraft and also about the flying taxis. So actually what it is. So we know that we always uh, heard that the word uh, terms of VTOL and this electric type of aircraft actually using the uh, vertical takeoff and landing as well as it can fly over all the above the cities by the 2030. So we can have more details uh, in the next uh, slide. Where we can see that in here, when we talk about the uh, urban air mobility, okay, we can see that the refer to the urban transportation system that uh, move people by air such as air taxis. We know that um, we have the uh, lots of many taxis, a lots of different type of civilizations such as like uh, Uber, Bolts, Grabs that use uh, for uh, land mode of transportation. But for air, we are having the such as the air taxis. So in these things, uh, the urban air mobility also cover a wide mobility uh, services also such as a uh, drone deliveries. So in here, we can see that the drone data center, we can see that up to 300, we can see what diff, what type of uh, drone that can be used uh, and then up to 1000 meter, what type of drone that can be used and up to 3000 meter and above 6000 to 15,000 uh, 15, uh, feet uh, is uh, already part of the uh, commercial uh, aeroplane such as like uh, uh, ATR for example, the twin propeller aircraft. But when go 15,000 to uh, 36,000 is more or less, more or less is the commercial uh, airplane like 7, uh, 737, uh, 74 or even Airbus uh, series. So we can see that the future of the uh, air mobility, we can see that air taxis and, and, and drone will be uh, on top of our head, depending on the different uh, altitude. So how does uh, this uh, thing uh, will, will, will actually create the future of the air mobility, future of the mode of transportation for the air transport? It will be a bigger fleet and 
also a shorter flight. We can see that in this diagram, basically we can see that in the 2030, it said that passenger advanced air mobility operators could rival to these largest airlines in flight per day and fleet size. The blue one is... Yeah. Kemudian dari ini, certain kinds of logistic activity itu, ya, jadi komunikasi di sini nih, ini yang 13 ini, ya. Um, Prof. <laughs> okay, I will continue ya, Prof. Okay, so we can see that in the blue line uh, in dot in here is actually representing the the new uh, air mobility operators such as flying taxis or even the uh, drone uh, that being used for the uh, freight transporting goods from one another one to another yeah so if we can see that in here flight per day for the commercial uh, or large airline airline we can see that is more or less about 2200 uh, but if we come to work to 2030 the predictions uh, the simulation has been made that it can go up more than 20000 flight per day as well as we can see that the fleet size more or less 800 for the large uh, airlines but for the air mobility it can go up to 1000 as well as you can see that along on the network nodes the active pilot the passenger per day uh, average flight time as also of course the annual revenue we cannot compare with a large airline because large airline can take more passenger compared with the uh, flying taxi for examples okay so in terms of the revenue it will come differently because it dif different on the size and the capacity that particular aircraft can can uh, uh, bring the passenger so this basically show that imagine that in future in the closest one like in 2030 these uh, air mobility operators could rival the today's largest airlines uh, operator and then uh, when we talk about the current situation actually these these are the thing that or uh, the operations the authority and the regulatory body is currently working hard in understanding how should the air mobility for the uh, future transportation need to be addressed uh, for examples that uh, for the open uh, concept uh, where it has a low risk operation uh, this is based on the EASA, yeah, the European Aviation Safety Agency. And also when we talk about the drone that uh, have a specific uh, purpose, uh, it will have a high risk operation. So we need the authorizations of the competence authority before flying, such as you need to have uh, certifications on the drone as well as also certifications on the pilot that operate the drones. Uh, and the, the 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 last one is also the certified that this has the highest risk operations. So this will need all the uh, unmanned air uh, system to be uh, certified in terms of the license and in terms of the competence authority to approve the operator and such. So these are more or less the future air mobility in order to understand the concept of the operations of, uh, for example, the flying taxi as well as the uh, uh, drone that used for the uh, transporting goods. Okay, but then uh, these are the examples of the uh, company that already being established in terms of the uh, future air mobility. For example, the Volocopter is one of the company that uh, currently working on the uh, vertical takeoff and landing uh, air mobility. And we can see that they are saying about the opportunity in terms of how uh, they want the people to uh, change in terms of the uh, mode of transportation okay and for the second one is the in terms of the head of the air operations and the peoples in terms of the uh, what we call it the carrier for the future of the air mobility you can see that uh, it will be something that is a real carrier opportunity for the young generation that currently might be listening to us okay there's a lot of opportunity in terms of when we talk about the enhancements and the 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 what we call it the technology digitalizations in terms of the mode of uh, transport
as well as uh, for this one, uh, he was talking about that uh, we think that similar to what we have with cars before, it is, seems like it's very impossible to have an autonomous car, but now we already have it. So in future, in 2030 or even 40s or even in, in 2045, uh, uh, it can be something that is a very common and a very normal for us to have the flying taxi flying through our house, for example, or even uh, taking off uh, in a very close uh, remote com co community uh, that we wanted to go from one destination to another destination. If it normally took for, for four to three hours, it can only took about 40 minutes or 30 minutes because the destination is just straightforward. No need to go to the traffic line, no need to ha hassle out on the traffic and such. Yeah. So these are the currently what are the industry out there is doing and what are currently they are developing in terms of the progress and for the future career in their industry. Okay, so in here when we talk about this also, the evolution will have an impact on the public perceptions of the entire aviation industry. Yes, it's also same goes that when the first uh, autonomous car has been has been uh, promote, uh, promoted, right? has been introduced, for example. So we have the same skepticals, but when we talk about the car, it can always simply pull over and it can only be stopped because it's on ground. But in terms of the flying taxi or even the flying car, for example, it needs lots of uh, things in terms of the enhancements of the technology itself, in terms of the engine, in terms of the size of the battery, how long it can go, in terms of the capacity of the passenger, for example, how many passengers they can bring. And of course, it's not more uh, like what we, the commercial uh, or the light aircraft uh, is currently doing right now. And also the cruising speed, okay? As well as when we talk about this, again, the perceptions of the public in order to understanding of the safety and security of the uh, mode of the transportation. That's why we can see that in this uh, slide, understanding on how the new use space will enable the safe integration of drones, not just in terms of European, because we know that European has a very structured and a very developed countries and has a very, uh, what we call it, the uh, enhancements of the technology. So the registry emerged in terms of the building block in order to materialize this uh, UAS uh, integration into the airspace and promote the acceptance. So the authority and regulatory bodies such as EASA, such as uh, what we call it the CAA or even the FAA and even the local authority of the uh, particular country is also making lots of progress and lots of uh, works in order to make sure that it can be accepted and also the most important thing is the safety. Okay, but again, uh, flying taxis are going to happen, right? The questions at this moment is actually what is going to happen? It's not, oh, if we have this and how it's going to be? Oh, if it's like this and how we're going to, we're going to overcome? It's not like that, okay? But the thing is actually we are currently focusing on when it's going to happen okay so we can see through these letters new basically there's a lots of difference uh, what we call it uh, initiative a lot of uh, official launch has been uh, conducted throughout the world but perhaps in malaysia or even in indonesia or even in thailand the progress might be a bit slow but uh, yes the progress is it there yeah for examples that the latest one we can see that uh this one yeah on the 18th of uh october 2022 okay we have all these ultra light qualification and also on the 18th, 13th of october just recently right in dubai they completed the first public of the electric uh vertical takeoff and landing flight so image in that uh, all these uh basically the latest news that has been published is giving us an idea giving us actually the directions on how the future of the people's gonna traveling uh 
perhaps in 2020 or even even sooner okay you, you okay. your screen is uh, still fixed not move is it okay your screen is not move right now is this uh in this okay uh which one just now is stop no 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 you can to continue but your screen is not move if you are you want to translate about it okay now it's okay yeah 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 but not not move your screen uh, you four point okay so okay okay so now i'm moving into the virgin hyperloops is is the screen is the same uh yes is this the new okay please okay, okay, okay all right so in here okay all right okay so now uh this is something that is uh not basically related to the air uh mobility uh for the future but it's some rather somehow is taking into a consideration of the methods and the company that uh, for the aviation and aerospace these are more or less we call it as a train yeah virgin hyperloops so this virgin hyperloops is uh is something that is new perhaps um the students out there can have um uh, what we call it have a have an uh, uh, research on these particular things even though it's not air mobility but it is more to rail but it is something that is very interesting uh vacuum chamber that transporting from uh passenger from one another to another using the like kind of like a zp line uh, right and move back to the uh air mobility okay drone delivery is actually is more leaf than you think okay while the progress for drone delivery has been substantial we believe that in the air aircraft or aerospace industries that the three catalysts that can determine the se sectors that trajectory going forward such as the of course again the regulatory uh, regulatory body the regulations and uh, the public acceptance and also the cost these are the something that we need to have a look uh, in order to understand that how the projections of the air mobility for the future and uh, more or less uh, towards the end um, when we talk about the apples and oranges we need to make sure that the making sense of the economics of the advance of the air mobility we need to know we need to understand we need to adapt and adopt as an emerging industries so that it will be prepared for the operations and the competitions of the comp uh, of the other form of the mode of the transportations so we need to make sure that we understand clearly uh in terms of the what you need and metric uh we need to measure in terms of the future air mobility so nevertheless uh i'm almost come towards the end uh, prof uh, prof Reza. the yeah. urban air mobility yeah the urban air mobility is the rise of the new mode of uh, transportation so basically it's ready for takeoff it's just the matter of when and actually it's come towards the the next aviation uh revolutions so by then i think that's all for my uh presentation wow. <laughs> amazing, amazing thank the you of <laughs> amazing amazing okay very yeah. interesting i will share the slide uh yes good, good. i will share the slide too all right thank you very much it's very good uh, right now, before the second speaker sharing, uh, usually we will to look the uh, refreshing song by Karina. Uh, are you copy me, tak? What are you Okay, yeah, right now. Uh, yeah, right, Pak. Coba Karina sharing screen. Uh, Pak Basri yang tadi sudah saya hantar dekat you uh, to di uh, share di screen right now. Uh, Karina boleh boleh dengar ya? Okay. Any Pak Basri, Anjik Basri, uh, you can to look right now in the screen. You are your one uh, point. Uh, okay, baik. Terima kasih. One point. Yeah. Saya izin tak uh, on cam ya? Yeah, yeah. No problem. I know you are the on uh, studio right now. <laughs> 
ओके भाई थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू डॉक्टर कुंपरेजा गुमिला एंड मोहम्मद नो दैन ऑल द स्टूडेंट ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट हू अटेंड दिस लेक्चरिंग दिस आफ्टरनून सो आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर टू शेयर सम स्लाइड इट्स अ स्लाइड अबाउट द मोबिलिटी so uh for has already mentioned here about uh, all mode of transport uh, the future of mobility but in this slide i will focus on uh, the barrier yeah uh, this more talking about the buses not the aviation or maritime or this about the buses uh, because uh, in jakarta yeah uh, the buses transportation are uh, developed very fast yeah uh, for the last 5 years and uh, the future mobility going to be uh, electrical yeah all electrical the buses the uh, aeroplane yeah is still under development the ship yeah because it's cheap and uh, is a very uh, friendly environment yeah a green transport we call it green transport so in adopting the electric buses there is a barrier that uh, we face yeah all government in the world yeah all the cities that they want to implement the electric buses they facing the barriers so i want to highlight uh, the barriers yeah what is the barriers in adopting the electrical bus yeah so uh, maybe next slide yeah the first barrier uh, is the technology technological barrier yeah so uh, most of the cities yeah our government in the world yeah currently facing this barrier uh, because this technology are uh, quite new yeah and many people do not know about this technology yet yeah even though actually they already play with uh, remote control cars yeah in their childhood but they feel this is something new but actually this is old but it's uh, with the technology yeah the battery can uh, last longer yeah and more powerful compared than previously so that's why now buses yeah the big bus yeah not the small one not the our remote control uh, toys the bus can be uh, the battery yeah, can be used to run the buses so this is uh, quite amazing yeah that uh, the battery can make the bus move yeah around the city so this technology make some uh, people yeah mostly in the government office they are not understand yeah how this buses can operate so it's make a problem here yeah, in cities yeah uh, how they can implement this technology in their transport uh, system yeah land transport system in their city yeah uh, proper input requirement for initial cost benefit analysis in e bus and infrastructure still not uh, taken yeah by the government yeah the strategy, strategies and technique of optimized design and implementation of the ebus project also still under development yeah the operational characteristic limitation maintenance requirement of ebuses still are not available yet yeah on the market and nowadays the chinese market yeah the chinese uh, vendor the chinese manufacturer of the buses is the winner because they are brave yeah to try a new technology yeah infrastructure planning need to be complete prior to adoption and most of the city are not ready uh, for this yeah okay the next slide yeah okay the next slide uh, uh, is the key technology 
ke teknologi ya teknologi still again problem in the second slide ya uh, the vehicle and the batteries ya produce limited range and power ya like I mentioned before uh, the, the power is unlimited ya the battery manufacturing industry still in mature ya we still don't know that the battery can last longer is it for all batteries yeah. uh, how many impact of the uh, battery is still uh, now yeah so uh, some bus operator still worry they increase huge amount okay uh, the second one is agencies and operator yeah uh, lack of knowledge yeah to adopt this new operation so uh, they're still confused yeah how to run this kind of uh, bus electric bus yeah to be operated in the transport system and then grid and charging infrastructure yeah like in the picture uh, still involving yeah the technology so uh, the face of limitation and stability challenges of this uh, infrastructure so like in Jakarta itself yeah this kind of technology like picture is still available yet so it's still depending on uh, the depot, yeah. So the buses charging in the depot and operate maybe only five hours. So some operator are not happy with this, but if there is more advanced technology, yeah, it uh, will be very good, yeah, because they can uh, charge the bus every in every bus stop, yeah. So the bus can be last longer, yeah, maybe eight hours or maybe twelve hours in a day. Okay, next slide. Yeah, this one the most important, yeah. The key financial barrier, like I mentioned before, uh, implementing the e-buses will be uh, involving of huge of amount of money, yeah. So this is also a barrier yeah in other way in that uh, other side yeah the financial uh, institution yeah like banking and leasing companies they're still not confident yeah with the e-buses because this is a new thing for them so they're still not confident and they still not have a regulation or a decision yeah to take a loan yeah for the e-buses, yeah, the scaling e-buses project require a uh, large risk tolerant capital investment, yeah, both to procure the vehicle and supply the, the necessary charging infrastructure and grid upgrade, yeah. Often the no financial institution are willing to make this investment, yeah, outside of small uh, scale pilot project. So this is the barrier, yeah, because not all cities have a lot of money, yeah. Maybe some cities are very rich, yeah. So they are okay with the pilot project. But when it's go to implement in a bigger scale, uh, then it's become a problem, yeah, because it's not support by the uh, the financial institution, yeah. Okay, maybe uh, next slide. Yeah, still uh, about the financial barrier, yeah. So uh, in traditional procurement, yeah, uh, we can purchase the spare part, yeah, in a uh, cheaper way, yeah, because we don't need to buy a lot of uh, spare part, yeah. But in e-buses, yeah, we have to purchase like. Uh, huge of battery yeah, in advance and the buses also very expensive compared to conventional buses so everything will be very costly for for the procurement yeah in advance 
but in long term the operation it's much cheaper yeah conven uh, compared than the uh, conventional buses so uh, this also another challenge yeah a barrier yeah for operator yeah for government to implement uh, to adopting the electric bus in their city because it's very very expensive yeah in advance but it cheap when it's operate so it's another challenges yeah okay uh, next slide then uh, this one is the institutional barrier yeah the institutional is actually the barrier coming from the government itself yeah uh, example the first one yeah no loads uh, or route map yeah to provide strategy plan or financial backing for implement e buses so uh, the role of government here very important yeah because they are the regulator they can make a new laws yeah so but the new laws they still not familiar so they don't know what laws that they need to implement they need to issue yeah what is the route map what is the plan yeah uh, for financial what the financial strategy yeah that the government need uh, to support the uh, operator the government so uh, the financial institution yeah have confidence to support to finance yeah all this operator yeah and the second one is ineffective plan in place that lack clear goals and financial incentive yeah government also never uh, most yeah most this is most yeah it's happened actually it's uh, what i mentioned today is based on the research uh, from the minister of finance economic and development of france uh, of germany yeah, of germany so this is a real thing happen yeah uh, in most city around the world including jakarta yeah but luckily in jakarta the leadership yeah uh, play the important things yeah that's why jakarta can develop uh, the transport yeah the bus very fast so in every plan yeah, and clear goal so it's uh, uh, it's implement this yeah the political party not agree actually uh, can be more efficient okay next slide Okay, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, then the last one is the authority. Yeah, uh, the authority, like I mentioned, is uh, about the leadership. Yeah, the leadership. So the lack government access to land properties. Yeah, uh, it happened in Jakarta itself. Yeah, so the properties not belong to the government. So it's a bit difficult to get the land yeah even the public transport uh, like the bus stop yeah the bus stop uh, for government uh, make the charging uh, station yeah it's a bit difficult because the bus stop belong to another department yeah so the coordination a bit tight yeah then it's become a challenges yeah even to make a depot yeah uh, government don't have a huge land yeah uh, to make the depot so it's again yeah become another problem and then uh, in jakarta yeah uh, the bus operate by a local government company yeah uh, government of jakarta so when the bus go to another city yeah example bekasi tangerang which is just uh, next to jakarta and most of the uh, people work in Jakarta coming from Bekasi, Tangerang, and Depok. Yeah, they use a public transport. But 
uh, when when it's come to the fair, yeah, uh, how to determine the fair, it's become another problem because some political parties said uh, this is not uh, Jakarta resident. Why we must subsidize uh, these people? Yeah, so uh, that's become another issue. Yeah, uh, beside the land. Yeah, and then when it's cross border, yeah, like go to Bekasi Depok, yeah, it's also become another challenge, yeah, uh, because it's not belong to Jakarta government. So uh, it's happened also in another city uh, in other part of the world. Okay, uh, next slide. Yeah, that's all uh, my presentation. It's a short presentation, but I hope that can give that can contribute yeah uh, the knowledge yeah the barrier that we face then we can share uh, the knowledge or we can make a uh, research yeah how to uh, remove this barrier okay pak tengku reza saya kembalikan lagi ke pak tengku Suaranya panjang. Belum keluar, Pak. Ah, coba. Oke, okay, sekarang boleh okay. ya? Ya, boleh, boleh. Oke, okay, right now we will go to question answer in the email. I will to read for the uh, Puan Hazaria first. Puan Hazar, you copy me right now. Uh, I want to uh, read a question for you. Uh, All right. The session, uh, for uh, Pak Masri. Okay, from Yanti. Uh, very interesting uh, sharing. Uh, Dr. Haza, I am is very uh, get the spirit from you. <laughs> okay. Uh, long term ago, in Indonesia, there is a private airline, a new uh, comer, uh, quote unquote, name is Sempati Air. Uh, the interest of uh, passenger about this airline because uh, entertain in cabin while fly. That program uh, very popular because many passengers get lucky draw and give, uh, but the airline uh, grounded while political and economic crisis in Indonesia 1998. A question, regarding your sharing, uh, about the future cabin, is it uh, after COVID pandemic passenger more happy with the new atmosphere, especially for long destination? To the first question. And the second, about new technology re regard autonomous issues, what happened of the future while many aircraft model fly in air authority? <laughs> this is the second question only for the is the speaker. No, from Lani to Mr. Basri. Uh, the first uh, regard techno barrier uh, uh, electricity bus. What happened in Indonesia cities? Is uh, the only capital city uh, available for electricity of bus and the second, about uh, competition uh, on transportation uh, weather between airline, speed train, electric bus, and so on, what condition we will look of the future in Indonesia? Is there will be high competition is good for citizens or passengers? Okay. Uh, every speaker is two question only for the uh, short term. Uh, you can to answer okay. around five to seven minutes of every speaker. <laughs> okay, I think just a quick one from me. Yes, yeah? I jawab dulu ya, Prof. Yes, you are first. 
Okay, all right. So the first question tadi daripada Yanti, thank you so much for the question. You're talking about the sympathy air, about the entertainments in the sympathy air and also but due to the politicals and also some other problems, the there's no longer sympathy air. But you are asking me about the future cabin, yeah? Mm -hmm. So basically when we talk about the uh, future cabins, okay, so airline basically are constantly looking for uh, a method of uh, upgrading, okay, upgrading their 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 cabin design in terms of the first one is normally is in terms of the maximizing the number of the people that they can put in each flight, okay. But again, yes, uh, more numbers of peoples, but again, they are trying to ensure that without sacrificing uh, the comf the comfortables of the passenger and 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 when they have the what we call it the pandemic uh, recently, the mode of the traveling also changes. But again, nevertheless, uh, the the futuristic of the cabin design is not just in terms of on how uh, maximizing the number of people, but they are also improved in terms of uh, what we call it the 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 technology of the circulations of the air and such because mm -hmm. of the those uh, COVID related issue and such. But again, uh, when we talk about this uh, futuristic cabin design, also in future we may see uh, an improvement such as a double-decker economy seat uh, that provide more space for the passengers and also the of course increase the capacity of the airline that's why the investment into the futuristic cabin design is always has been the uh, 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 the what we call it the the, the marking indication in terms of the profitables of the airline other than different technology so that will be the futuristic cabin design if you google it uh, if you look at the, the the terms also some aircraft are also trying to come up with the what we call it the glass uh, uh floorboard so that they can see all those uh things uh underneath them or even the the glass uh throughout the window they can see that uh, more view in terms of the uh passenger uh, futuristic design and then uh, i think the second question is asking about the autonomous if proresa can you just uh, repeat back the questions yeah i might have missed it ask you that that while the many uh uh i i i i have high sir is many model is uh, uh you uh, I, I mean uh, uh, come to the 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 uh, atmosphere of air what the traffic will be to uh, happen ah. okay understood yes in the presentation that i that i showed and also i did share the presentation you can see that the chart basically when 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 we talk about the current uh, air transportation nowadays there will be a sort of a communication between the tower and also the pilot. So whenever that the pilot is uh, preparing their flight, they already been given the flight plan. So this is a normal common things. So meaning that whenever that the, the, the aircraft wanted to go from destination A to B, up there is basically it's like a highway that cannot be seen by the normal people but the air traffic controller know that oh they have like a 10 uh that they have like a 10 multiples a uh, highway up there if you wanted to go from a to b you can take a route one two three four five depending on the traffic flow on that particular time okay but then when we have the urban air mobility is going to be more complex because the attitude of the aircraft uh, is uh, 15,000 and above, but now it's being uh, 6,000 and below, even up to 300 feet, even up to 400 feet, for example. So that's mm. how uh, nowadays we can see that the developments of the air mobility is yet to be Im implemented. Because why? Mm. These are the crucial part in terms of the air traffic management for the uh, urban air mobility. Because the first thing we need to know that uh like you are having a mobile phone you are 
being distributed from one tower to another. Suddenly, you go to some place that there is no closer tower. So you don't have internet connection, you have a very bad and poor connection. So the same thing as a drone, the same thing as a flying taxi, the infrastructure of the communications in terms of the tower, in terms of the, the ground, and in terms of the... We are looking into the satellite communication, basically, so that it can cater the very well-established facilities and infrastructure for the urban air mobility. Mm. And likewise, the well-established aircraft, kita dah ada air traffic management control, kita dah ada air traffic controller that control all those kind of things. But for the urban air mobility, these are the crucial part. I think I hope that answered the question, Jabra. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Yeah, very good. Therefore, don't worry if the drone is come to your home and uh, bring the nasi lemak from Selangor, right? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Because uh, to the video is um, many uh, model of aircraft will be to full in the, uh, the air. Okay, Cik Basri, you can to uh, answer to question two uh, around five to seven minutes too. from Lani. Uh, Cik Basri, boleh. Uh, Dengar tadi, I thought you are difficult in the out of the station. Uh, Kang Inda, apakah Pak Basri masih on di dalam atau beliau ada soalan sehingga mungkin sudah terkeluar. Nanti saya hantar dekat email sahaja. Ada masih Kang Inda, Cik Basri atau Pak Basri? Kang Inda. Uh, macam saya tak nampak dia punya apa dia guna yang lain. Indah aku bilang, are you look uh, Mr. Basri right now in the Zoom or sudah terkeluar? Pak Indah. Uh, Indahnya sendiri tak ada suara pun. <laughs> oh, dia pun macam pergi bila ya, air. Uh, Puan, uh, you ya, can to closing lima. Eh? Ada? Ah, ya. ya. Uh, nak Pak Basri kayaknya terkeluar ya, karena dia ada masalah internet. Oh, Pak Basri. Okay. Gak ada kan? Gak ada Pak, keluar. Oke, okay, no problem. Kita akan mendengarkan The Amazing Closing Remark from the Dr. So, uh, Azaria. Silakan, Pak. The, the, the Closing Remark and the last uh, uh, sharing with you what you want to uh, conclusion 